I thought I'd lost my business in that fire. But my agent was there before the flames were out. He said, together, we're going to rebuild. Our employees depended on it. My independent agent and auto owners made sure we didn't skip a beat. I mean, we didn't miss a single payroll. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Or Insurance in Dublin is your local independent auto owners insurance agency. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Real Talk here on TV 35. I'm your host, Pat Brock, and I tell you, when you talk about science fair, there is nothing like this one right here. Dublin City Schools has a district science fair for K through 12, and I tell you, we've got two here that are spearheads of this project, and we're going to let them share with us about just how it all started. Tell us who you are, lady. <laughs> My name is Marshall Kennel, and I am the district um, science fair coordinator. Mm -hmm. And um, this science fair came about um, because of my two passions. I have a passion for science and a passion for kids. And you teach geographical science, is yes, that correct? Yes, I teach geographical science um, at Dublin Middle School, mm -hmm. where Dr. Stuckey is our lead leader yes. and my cohort in science. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Now, uh, Dr. Stuckey, I mean, this project right here, K through 12 science fair. How long have you all had this within the district? This is our first year, actually. Uh, Ms. Kennel, who's doing a great job leading this initiative, I think she did it in her previous district, so mm -hmm. she ran the idea about it, about it to me, and I was very excited about it. Uh, got to go ahead from my superintendent, mm -hmm. and I gave her to go ahead, and she's put together a great uh, event here today, and so we're just proud of, of having this event for Dublin City Schools. Absolutely, and of course, as you look around Dublin Mall, you see so many different sections of science fair projects. So, you know, just to kind of implement this, what work did you have to do with working with other schools and of course the age group, so you have a lot of different modifications that you have to make for a kindergartner doing a science fair project as opposed to a senior. How was that, uh, the details into getting this to come off? Um, the first thing I did was I actually talked to the principals mm -hmm. and we came up with an idea as to what we wanted the program to look like. And as far as modifications, science is science. Right. And the students, the only thing we had to modify really was the terminology. There you go. The excitement's <laughs> going to be there. I mean, our kindergartners were just as excited as oh, our 12th wow. graders to be able to do this. And I'm really excited because of the buy-in that I had from the district and also from the teachers at the school. And that's what's wonderful, when you're able to partner together with that within the system and everyone's excited about one goal. So that's wonderful. Exactly. And, you know, when I pitched the idea to Dr. Williams, he immediately said, okay, you take it. It's your baby go uh -huh. ahead with it and um, we got a group of teachers from every each of the schools right. to serve as coordinators in their school and they did a phenomenal job um, mr. Zellner built the science fair web page for oh. us and all of the teachers pulled in and were able to help to train their other teachers at the school so it's been a really a big program for the whole district this is so wonderful so you know as you can see the kids are in the back eating right. lunch right now right. so how many kids does this combine with the K through 12 how many kids do you have here represented? I think Ms. Ken and I talked, we're looking at about 150 kids. Oh, and like you God. said, uh, they've done a great job of presenting their information. We do provide some downtime for them now to yes. eat and socialize because we know that they want to be able to socialize with their friends. Mm -hmm. But about 150 kids. Uh, and I'm just proud of the fact of all of our teachers coming together, like you said, mm -hmm. just doing what's best for our, our district. Absolutely. You know, so when was the start of this project? And then now where we are in January? Um, I think we started about two and a half months ago mm -hmm. is when we came up with the idea. Okay. And um, we created a timeline, yeah. and each of the students had milestones that they had to reach in order to make their project successful. And most of them, you know, they were right on it with those <laughs> parents. I really want to take a chance to say thank you to the parents wow. for their buy-in. Yes. Because science fair, everybody knows that that's really a labor of love for the kids, but for the parents, it's something else. I remember <laughs> science fair projects for my kids, and I mean, it felt as though I was in science. Yes. Doing the <laughs> and so, you know, and you've got several judges here. Uh, tell us about the judges that you have for, the, for this event. Uh, one of the 
pro um, projects for the district is to make sure that we have a voice for all of our stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And so we went out into the community. Um, we have representatives from Flex Steel, um, from different scientific industries in our in our area, as well as, as leaders in the community. This is wonderful. And you know, I'm excited because I'm excited to see kindergartners doing a science fair project. Because I recall when I was in kindergarten, uh, science fair was not on my list of things to do. And so what do you hope that this does as a whole? So when you look at the big picture of this, young kids as early as five years old doing a science fair project, doing the research, you know, doing the experiments, the hypothesis, what do you hope to gain from this or for the children to take away from something to this magnitude? Just excitement about science. You know, um, one of the things that I remember most, and I was telling the kids and they were laughing at me, I said, I was a science nerd ever since I was a kid. <laughs> I used to have science shows in my backyard. Get I do out of here. I do insect collections and invite people over to come see my insect collections. And not everybody has that passion. Right. Um, because they think that science is just in the classroom. Yes. So I wanted them to be able to take some things that they're passionate about mm -hmm. and be able to create experiments about what they're passionate about. So this is I, awesome. I hope that they, they get they can take away just the excitement and the love for the science. That is wonderful. I mean, I'm not a science girl, but I'm excited and just to see some of the projects and the things that they're able to do. One of your students actually um, made a portable battery a charger. And I'm like, okay, we need to talk. So these are, these are you know, signs of future inventors right here with what they're doing here with this science project. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Stuckey. Always a pleasure. Uh, so proud of the work that you uh, do and what you're accomplishing with these middle schoolers. And so good to see you again because you're definitely doing a great thing. Thank and you. you're making science not just, they're not just learning, but you're actually making it fun. That, that's the goal. So you are a welcomed addition. Thank you so to much. To Dublin City Schools. Thank you. I enjoy being here. Thank you. So we're going to meet some of those kids, ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment. So what makes OFTC a top choice for college? Here's why. You get hands-on training, and OFTC instructors have years of industry experience. You see, when you have access to that kind of knowledge, it makes a difference. And with financial aid, grants, and scholarships, OFTC is affordable. You can step into your new career debt-free. Think differently about college and make the Coney Fall Line Technical College your top choice. Classes begin January 7th. OFTC is an equal opportunity institution. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now it's your opportunity to meet some of these young people here. This is the Dublin City Schools District Science Fair here at the Dublin Mall. And they're starting doing science projects as early as kindergarten and first grade. And this is your chance to meet some of these young ladies to start out with. Hi, girls. Hi, could you please tell everybody who you are? I'm Alexis. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on, Alexis. I'm going to start with you, okay? okay? But tell everybody who you are, how old you are, right? And tell us what school you're uh, representing, okay? What, what school you go to. You ready, Alexis? All right. I'll hold it. I got okay. it. You go ahead and look in that camera and tell them hi. Hi. I'm Alexis, and I go to Hickquist Elementary, and I'm six years old. And is this your first science fair project? Yes. Was it cool? Yes. Very good. What's your name? Alia. Alia. How old are you? Six. And you're a kindergartner, huh? Yes. Did you have fun doing this science fair project? Yes. Very good. All right, we're going to go up to the older girls here, starting with you, young lady. Hi. Hi. Who are you? Joycelyn. All right, Joycelyn. So you're a first grade. How old are you? Six. Six years old. Now, did you have fun doing this science fair project? You did? All right, young lady, talk to us. I'll hold it. I got it. Don't worry. Hi, my name is Elise Red. I go to Susie Dash Elementary School, and I'm six years old, and six, I'm in first grade. In first grade. Now, listen, when I was in kindergarten and first grade, I definitely don't remember having to do a science fair project. So we're going to let you all talk to us about what your project is about. Alexis, you start off telling us about your project, okay? This is both of our projects. I know, I know. You're going to talk together. Well, we started with seven cups, then we added food coloring in it and water. We got, we had blue in there, but our, our first two teacher took some of the colors out and we just saw some of these um, cups. What do you call your project? What's the name of it? It's called... Um, I can read the title. Okay, let her read the title. Walking Waters. Walking Waters. Now tell us what does Walking Waters mean? 
It means like a lot of water just walking up something. <laughs> and how does it do that? It's like we added, oh, hey, we had some cups, food mm -hmm. coloring, and paper towels. And a few minutes, two minutes, the paper towels just shrunk smaller and smaller. Oh my. And then the colors just went to the other cups and started moving. That is wonderful. Now, who, who all worked on this project with you girls? Miss Parker. Miss Parker. And, mm -hmm, and Miss Wiggins. And Miss Wiggins. Now, um, so your results was, what was the result from this walk in water? Um, it was that we had, we just wanted our spinning mint to be great. It w Was it great? Yeah. It was great. Very good. Thank you so much, ladies. Okay. All right now, first graders, you got to tell us about your project. Are you ready? Are you girls ready? All right, tell us about this project. Today, yeah. today we, we have a project about what do, what does... We drink affect our teeth. Really? And what what is it that we drink and how does it affect our teeth? Well, our conclusion is soda has ingredients that eat away at your teeth and could leave a nasty oh. a nasty stain. Coffee and some juices can also stain your teeth. Okay, water so coffee and milk, mm -hmm. water and milk are good choices and help protect my teeth. Very good. We must make sure that we are protecting our teeth by brushing at least twice a day. This will pre prevent my teeth from becoming unhealthy. Hold on, hold on. Let Joyce, let Joyce read some. What else, Joyce? We must make. You've got to make smart choices, right, with what you drink. So, drinking coffee is that? Does that stain your teeth? Yes. Yes. Drinking water will that stain my teeth? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> what about? sodas yes yes all right so what can we drink that won't stain our teeth water and milk water, water and, and milk. milk that's it that's it right all right girls so did you learn a lot from this project yes very good all right keep turning around here let the audience see you and now you two come here so you talked about walking water so did you learn a lot about this walking water mm -hmm. yeah. so does water have feet no no, no. <laughs> No, it just absorbs all that water to make you walk up. Oh, it absorbs the water. And like, so with the paper towel, it absorbed that water and made it seem as though it was walking, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very good. Now, do you girls think that you're going to enjoy science when you get older? Mm-hmm. What did you all like most about your projects, about doing this project? Well, I like it. Hold on, one at a time. <laughs> Turn, turn around right here. There you go. I love that the title was called Walking Water. <laughs> you love the title, just the, the the fact that it was Walking Water, right? And what did you love about this project? Um, the the food coloring and the cups and all the the um the uh, shrink of the paper towel. Wasn't that cool? All right. What did you two love? Cool. Very cool. What did you love about your project? Um, we. Stand straight, baby. I like. Checking on it every day. Checking on it and seeing how it turns out, right? Okay. Come here. What did you like, Miss Red, about your project? When when you get to see the pictures and you get to see what it does. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now you know what things you need to kind of look out for to keep those teeth from getting stained, right? Yes. All right. Very good. Well, nice talking to you ladies. All right, well, you have met some of the kindergarten and first grade class here at the Science Fair, Walking Water and What It Takes. What's the name of your project? What, what does what we drink affect our tea? There you go. All right, thank you, ladies. Tell them bye. Bye. And all right, we're definitely moving down the trail here for the district science fair, and we've got another young lady here, a fourth grader, right? Yes, ma'am. Please introduce yourself. You're part of the gifted program, right? Yes, ma'am. Who are you? I'm Zakai Blackshear. I, I'm, four, I'm in fourth grade. I go to Susie Dasher Elementary School. All right. So listen, why don't you kind of explain to us about your project, okay? Were you ready to do that? All right. Share with us about your science project. My project is, my title of the project is Slime Project. Mm -hmm. I have four samples of slime. I use different materials for different slimes. 
The materials I use to use to the slimes are Emma's glue, washable paint, shaving cream, activator slash borax, mm -hmm. a bowl, and a spoon. Now let me ask you this now. A lot of times kids have been making slime like all the time. Is this something that you've always made? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> So this project right here kind of showed your skills that you already had, right? Yes, ma'am. All right, so in making this, in this project, so you use different types of materials. And so what have you discovered? Which one is the best material to use to make slime? I think sample three is the best material to use for slime. And what is that sample? What does that consist of? That sample is based on Emma's washable mm -hmm. color glue, shaving cream, and borax. And now for this here, let's look at it. Oh, so you've got different colors here, right? You got a purple. This one is actually the one that went out. This is the one. This is the one that worked best for you. This one. Which one was the wor least effective? Uh, sample one. Sample one. This is an example of adding too much activator. Ah. Yeah, that's kind of like this feels like some kind of like little rubber pieces, doesn't it? All right. And now, how long did it take for you to do this project? About 15, 20 minutes. That's it. Now, what made you decide to want to do a project on slime? Because I'm very good at it, and I like, <laughs> I like playing with it. Very good. And you're being a part of the gifted program. Yes, uh, what does that mean? Like, I'm very smart and intelligent and creative. Very good. And now this is a perfect opportunity for you to show that creativity for the world to see, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. Keep it up. And nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, sir. The Slime Project. First Lawrence Bank invites you to experience banking at its best. Whether you have personal or business needs, we're a full-service bank big enough to handle all of your banking needs and small enough to provide you with that personal touch you've grown to expect from a community bank like First Lawrence Bank. Looking forward to your future. That's First Lawrence Bank in Dublin and Dexter. Member FDIC. All right, we've got some very anxious fourth graders here that are eager to share with you about their science project. And we're going to start with this young lady in the yellow. How are you? Good. Tell everybody who you are. Tell us about you. I'm Sarah Anderson. And I'm in the fourth grade. How old are you, Sarah? Nine and a half. Nine and a half. So you, you're at that age where you count your halves. Yes. I stopped counting my half, Sarah. <laughs> All right, young man, share with us. Who are you? My name is Rashawn. How old are you? I'm nine years old. Nine years old. Are you a half yet? Prob I'm probably um like quarter. Oh, nine and a quarter. All right. All right, young lady. My name is Kendall Chapman, and I'm 10 years old. 10 years old. Very good. Now, listen, this science project is pretty an important deal, isn't it? So we want you all to share with the people out there about a little bit about your project. Sarah, we're going to start with you. Are you ready? Yes. Shift a little bit back here. There you go. And share with us a little bit about your project. Well, I made the pro my project so that way I can know what paper towel works best. Mm -hmm. So that way I can... So that way I can know which one to buy next time we go to the store. All right. So which ones did you uh, use initially? I used Bounty, Viva, Brownie, and Sparkle. All right. And so what did you have to do within this project to determine which one was the best and which were the best materials to use? I had to put the paper towel on the top of the cup. Mm -hmm. They put the rubber band around the cup paper towel in the cup mm -hmm. and then I place two third cups of water on the paper towel and then I put coins on it until it ripped and whichever and I did two paper towels at a time mm -hmm. whatever one went ripped first was the weakest one oh, which one we, which one was weaker first I did Viva and and sparkle mm -hmm. and sparkle was the weakest one. Ah, okay. What about the bounty and the bounty and brawny? Mm -hmm. Brawny was actually the strongest. Is it? Brawny. Got it. Now, do you use paper towels at the house much? Yes. You do a lot of cleaning at the house? Yes, I spill a lot of I spill a lot of you stuff. You spill on a it. lot of stuff. So this science project has helped you for one to tell your parents what kind of paper towels you need to purchase, right? Yes. All right. So Brawny is the one that's the stronger. That's the that's the conclusion. It's the strongest one. 
Yes. And which one was after that? Viva, and really? then and then it was Barney, met Bounty, and then it was Sparkle. So Viva beat out Bra uh, Bounty. Yes. That's impressive. You have taught me something, Sarah. Thank you. All right, young man. Now listen, it's your turn. She's already taught us about which paper towel is the best one to use as far as the strongest. Now tell us about your project. Okay, you ready? All right. Mine was about thrust, drag, weight, and lift. Okay, say that again. Mine was about thrust, drag, weight, and lift. Okay, thrust, drag, weight, and lift. All right, is that right? Okay, tell us about it. Um, the, the question that um, most people would like to know and the main question was which airplane would fly the farthest considering thrust, drag, weight, and lift. Okay. What I thought was that um, the notebook paper, because it's lighter, so it should go, f so it should go faster and farther. So you made air, you made paper airplane, and what else? You made airplanes, right? So you did paper. What other materials did you use? Aluminum foil and cardboard. So which ones are the is the best? Um, you're talking about the most durable. Which one's more durable? The cardboard. The cardboard. What about the other ones? They're kind of easy to rip. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which one goes the farthest? Surprisingly, cardboard. R that is surprisingly. And so for me, I remember making paper uh, airplanes, but we should have been thinking about cardboard if we were smart enough, right? <laughs> Do you already make, did you already know how to make little paper airplanes or play airplanes? You already knew how to do that? Yes, ma'am. Not the special ones. Okay, so you made some special ones. No, not, not the special ones. I just made them basic. Basic ones, okay. So that we'd all understand it, right? And how long did your project take? Mm, prob probably like 30 or 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Well done. Well, thank you. Now I know that if I want to make an airplane that's going to be durable and will fly the farthest, I need to make it out of cardboard, don't I? You might need to kind of do a little tutor a tutorial for me to show me how to do it, okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, darling. <laughs> you scoot over right here, and we're going to let this young lady, the 10-year-old, you just come right here, baby, right here. All right, share with us about your project. My project is Crazy Crystal Creations. Crazy Crystal Creations, okay. What were the materials that you used? I use borax, mm -hmm. mason jars, pencils, and strings. Okay. What did you make? I made crystals. Oh, that you, wow. If you want, like, bigger crystals, you have to, like, wait weeks and, like, fill up the entire jar. So how long did these crystals make take to make? Five hours. Five hours. And so how did you know uh, which materials that you should use? Yeah. How did you know to use these different materials? So the question was asked, what environment grows the largest crystal? Research. Research. There it is, the key words. So you had to do a lot of research. Was it difficult for you doing this project? Not really, but I had, I had my mom do the cooking. You had your mom help you? So you, did you learn a lot? Can you say that you've learned a lot from the beginning to the end of this? Very good. Very good. Well, you guys have definitely come back here, son. You all have definitely taught us something here. I mean, I tell you, you know, when you really look at the, uh, the science projects and what they do with ordinary, simple materials and what they can make and the hypothesis and things that actually come from this is really outstanding. And especially working with them at such young age. And you can definitely, I can see you guys like in high school still doing science projects, going to the science fair, right? Yes. Is this something that you are continue to have interest in, you think? Yes, ma'am. Very good. Well, thank you so much for enlightening us. All right, good to meet you three. It has certainly been such an exciting day here to be able to spend time with K through 12 for their science projects. And now we're with Dublin Middle School from ages for grades 6th and 7th grade. And these young ladies here are going to share with us about themselves and talk a little bit about their project. We'll start with you. Hey, Amiria. Hey. Talk to us, young lady. Well, my name is Amelia Thomas. I'm in the sixth grade, and the title of my project is Ice Ice Baby. Ice Ice Baby. Too cold, too cold. Yes. <laughs> All right, so we're going to have you share about that in just a moment, okay? Hello, darling. Hi. Talk to us, please. My name is Paris White. I'm in the seventh grade, and my project is Real Horsepower. That's Real Horsepower. Yes, ma'am. Wonderful. All right now, girls, this is now your time to kind of step back a little bit and share with us about this project and what makes it so special. Amiria, we're going to start with you. 
So the title of my project is Ice Ice Baby, and the big question is, which fast food restaurant cup keeps ice frozen the longest? So I thought, originally, I thought it was going to be Chick-fil-A because it's thick and the material of it is styrofoam, but it turned out to be Dunkin' Donuts. I tested this by taking the cups and I measured the ice. I put 100 grams of ice into the cups mm -hmm. and then I put the top on it and I let the ice sit for two hours and then I checked on it and I poured out the water into a water cup. Wow. Now what made you decide to want to do a project about this? I was sitting at Golden Corral <laughs> at the church with my mama uh -huh. and then my drink got real watery. And so I said, Mom, my drink water. And my mom was like, they should get cups like the fast restaurant cups like Zaxby's and Chick-fil-A uh -huh. because they cups keep ice frozen forever. And, I, and then Puckett was like, that's a good science fair project. And I said, let's do which fast food restaurant cup keep ice frozen the longest. That's wonderful. So you got this idea from your already your educators, your parents, and now here it is. So your conclusion. Tell us about this conclusion. My conclusion was that my hypothesis was proven wrong. Dunkin' Donuts was the top, wow. and that Chick-fil-A actually came in second. And what came in third? Zaxby's. Zaxby's. Hmm. I learned that all of the cups that were made out of styrofoam were more, they um, kept the ice frozen longer. Love that. I'm telling you, we're learning stuff every day from these young men and young women from their science projects. Thank you so much for that. So now Dunkin' Donuts it is, is if you want a cold drink to last longer. All right, young lady, yes, step back and share with us about the real horsepower. Well, my topic is the real horsepower, and that means, you know, in a in Come a in car, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. right there. In a car, they have horsepower, mm -hmm. but this is real horsepower because we're using horses to lower PTSD symptoms in war veterans. Oh my God! So this is about PTSD. Yes, ma'am. And what made you decide to want to do something like this? Had you done research about it before? I have. I have not, unless before I took before I wanted to do this project. Mm -hmm. But I always observe the veterans in mm -hmm. the VA, and I always, and I'm very passionate about horses. Oh my lord! Okay, so tell us what was the final verdict. The verdict. So tell us what happened. So which horses did you use with this right here? I used the flashy one, which is a Palomino. Mm -hmm. I used Dainty D, which is an American paint horse. Okay. And I used Justice, which is a Tennessee Walker. And so, what did these horses have to do? These horses, they usually just go around, just um, bond with the war veterans mm -hmm. as is grooming, tacking, oh, wow. and cleaning up their stalls. Oh, that is so wonderful. This is such a great project. So which horse now would you say is a better horse to be able to use to help with PTSD? If I'm being honest, all of them are very great. Oh, wow. They're awesome. I love that. I mean, you know, to the thought pattern that goes into the projects that these young people are doing, it's just outstanding. Yes, and the amount of research. Was it difficult for you to find um, the materials that you needed and the research you had to do for this? Not for this project. All I had to do was, you know, that restaurants, people mm -hmm. like to eat out a lot. Yes, they do. Because nobody wants to cook anymore. Oh, wow. And so <laughs> all I had to look up was what materials are Dunkin' Donuts cups mm -hmm. and stuff were made out of. Styrofoam. And, and it popped right on up. That's perfect, perfect. And for you, young lady, how much research did you have to do for this project? I had to do quite a bit of research because mm -hmm. not a lot of people have these ideas. Yes. And I had to kind of, I had to kind of, um, research a lot. It's very brilliant when you think about that and when you think about therapy dogs and and animals for therapeutic care for um, post-traumatic stress I mean that's something that you would do in college now here you are seventh grade. Yes ma'am. Oh my gosh so the sky is the limit for you ladies doing this at this magnitude at the level sixth grade seventh grade is outstanding and we're super proud of you okay. Okay. Thank you Amiria. You're welcome. And thank you Patty. Thank you. <laughs> The City of Dublin's Natural Gas Department is offering a $1,000 rebate on the purchase of a natural gas, stove, furnace and tank or tankless water heater for new construction homes or if you're remodeling your home. Individual rebates include natural gas tankless, up to $400 rebate and free gas service installation, natural gas tank, free 40 gallon or $200 rebate on other sizes, free gas service installation, natural gas furnace, $200 rebate, natural gas stove, $100 rebate, natural gas dryer, $100 rebate, natural gas grill, $100 rebate, natural gas logs, $100 rebate, maximum yearly rebate, no maximum. Save now, save later. Call the City of Dublin Natural Gas at 277-5048.
You know, this is such a, a great day, of course, and getting to meet so many new people and new faces. Of course, we've got the, the Georgia Youth Science and Technology Centers. Uh, I got that right, you didn't got I? It right. <laughs> we've got the representatives here with us today. They're going to introduce themselves to you, tell you a little bit about what they do within the state of Georgia and why they're here today. We'll start with you, sir. Okay. My name is Aubrey Crook, and I'm the director of STEM programs for the Georgia Youth Science and Technology Center. And mm -hmm. pretty much what I do is, uh, uh, do all of the programming for the, for the state in regards to like, teacher programs, mm -hmm. student programs, and that comes in the form of uh, teacher professional learning mm -hmm. and uh, things like uh, student uh, summer camps and things right. like that for the kids. How important is Aubrey when you see the difference in STEM schools as opposed to schools that are different? It is, it, it is crucial. Yeah. It, it's crucial. It's like being that I've been a, around the state, I see a vast difference between North Georgia, South mm -hmm. Georgia, and Middle Georgia. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so that's why we're here today to you know, bring awareness to uh, STEM uh, careers and programs for this particular area. Wonderful. We're glad to have you here, sir. All right, young lady, Hi. talk to us. <clears throat> I'm Lynn Larson, and I am the Director of Strategic Initiatives for the Georgia Youth Science and Technology Centers. Ari and I work hand-in-hand. -hand. Um, we both work on professional development. Mm -hmm. I also, there are eight regional coordinators across our state, okay. and I actually work with them a lot, helping them with programming in their area, um, and student programs, teacher programs, whatever they need. I'm kind right. of a support system for them as well. Well, we're so thankful to have you here. And of course, you were one of the judges. I was. <laughs> so I was tell, us what, <laughs> <laughs> tell us about the criteria, because when you're looking around, did you have um, science projects in kindergarten? No, I did not. Yeah. I remember I had naps and recess. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So this is something new. I love it. Yes, and um, students are very engaged, though. When they start science in kindergarten, you can definitely see the difference yeah. when they get to high school. For sure. That for sure. they're much more in tune to what's going on in the world. That's right. And so what things were you looking at today? What have you been looking at in terms of the judging of what kind of... Here? I was really looking to see if the students made a connection with what they were researching. Okay. I mean, that's the key. Do you understand what you're mm -hmm. doing? And right. can you put it into your own words? Yeah. And it was, um, you know, starting with kindergarten, I did not um, judge a kindergarten one, but I did judge a fifth grade one. You can definitely see the difference from fifth grade all the way up. Right, right. But I mean, it's amazing what they're, what they're wanting to learn and mm -hmm. how they're trying to learn it. And what is so interesting is the different, uh, the different things that they're doing. Yes. It's some are very simple, mm -hmm. and then you see some that are actually very complex. Yes, and it's like these kids are think tanks, right. and they're having to do quite a bit of research. Right. Would you say? Yeah, yeah. Most definitely. <laughs> and so to start at the age of uh, you know the five year olds, kindergartens, and then up through high school, this is something that they will definitely be able to take with them. Yes, it's kind of a real world situation. We're right. trying to help them learn to be thinkers. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's the key. You know, we need a society yeah. that can solve problems yeah. and they need to start learning that in kindergarten. And the good thing about science fair is you're not looking at a computer. You're looking at a board, a trifold, and the things that they put on there, the research that they have to do. Correct. It's all about what they're interested in as well. So usually if they choose a topic that they're interested in, yeah. even starting in kindergarten, that may be a project that they can build on all the way to high school. You're absolutely and right. then, you know, they just continue to do that research, continue to add more mm -hmm. things to it, and it just becomes a phenomenal project by the time they're in high school. I see it as they're finding their passion and yeah. they're expounding upon it. So thank you, too, so much for being here. Okay. Thank you for the work that you do at the level that you do and how you're working with the schools here in Dublin Lawrence County to make them even better. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. I tell you, if you haven't learned anything by now, you are missing out because these young people are just doing some magnificent things. We've got another group with us that are going to share. We'll start with you, sweetie. How are you? Good. Talk to us. Who are you? I'm Layla Brown, and the name of our project is Landing Bridge is Falling Down. Wonderful. Now, you're a seventh grader, right? Yes, ma'am. Very good. Have you done science projects before? Yes, ma'am. How many times have you been doing it? Six. Oh, my Lord. You're a pro, aren't you? Mm, not really. Did you say, mm, not really? <laughs> but six times. That's wonderful. Hey, Cheyenne. Hi. Share with us who you are. Um, I'm Cheyenne Fennell. I'm a seventh grader, and this is my fifth time being in science fair. And last year I went to Risa. Nice. Congratulations. So you're a pro, right, when it comes to this? Mm -hmm. With the project that I did last year, yes. Very good. And what was that called? Um, crystallization, I think. Oh, did you? Very nice. Very nice. All right, young lady, talk to us. My name is Soraya Coombs, and I'm in the seventh grade. And 
This is my second time doing science fair. Mm -hmm. And so you all did it as a group. Was it difficult as a group or do you prefer working in groups? It was very difficult working in groups. Yeah. But you know what? This is really helping you girls because when you get into um, high school and college level, I mean, you're going to have a lot of group projects. So this is certainly uh, preparing you for that. All right. So we're going to let you girls kind of um, share a little bit. You share the beginning, you the middle, and then we'll, you do the ending part of okay? And we'll shift over a little bit. About right here. There you go, Cheyenne. You come on in and try to share with us a little bit about London Bridge is falling down. Okay, so the, when the London Bridge is falling down, basically our project is about how we made three bridge forms. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to see which bridge is the best form because we have all these disasters out here right. of bridge falling down. Okay, so this is really showing how to avoid a disaster on a bridge as far as it, the actual structure of it. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, did you design one particular one yourself? Yes, I designed... That bridge over there, the beam bridge. The beam bridge. Okay, so you did the beams. Now, do you like bridges? Not really. <laughs> they scare me. They are scary. All right, so you did the beam bridge. All right, come on here. Now, Cheyenne, tell us about your part in this here. Um, I also built a bridge. Mm -hmm. I did the suspension bridge over mm -hmm. there. Um, I'm the one that proofread, took pictures, and um, uh, posted and decorated the board. Very good, very good. So here it is. So you're doing three different type bridges. Come on in here, Cheyenne. You're good. Just step on back. There you go. Now, young lady, tell us about your portion. Well, I, bu I built the truss bridge. Mm -hmm. And after we built the bridges, we tested them. Mm -hmm. And our hypothesis was that her, br her suspension bridge was going to hold up mm -hmm. due to the more... It can hold. Can it hold more weight? The suspension bridge is that it's what it supposed is? Supposed to be more supported. More supported. Okay, so let's come over here now. Let's talk about these three bridges. All right. So you did the beam. Yes, ma'am. Now, if you you girls don't drive yet, do you? No, not yet. Okay. <laughs> Maybe off road, but. <laughs> the funny thing is, when you're talking about a, a bridge and seeing which one is the more sturdy bridge, I've ridden, I've driven uh, on bridges like for miles and miles and miles. Uh, underwater and above water and so I always have this thing about bridges and especially suspension bridges and the bridges that open up so the tell us about this bridge that you have and, and what was the um, you know what did it show from your procedures okay the beam bridge is also known as the Schringer bridge mm -hmm. and it's known to like have a pier at each end to support it mm -hmm. and stuff and it's like the real simplest bridge to build and okay. real cheap and um it only lasted at 10 pounds. So you're putting weights on this, right? Is that what it was? Yes, ma'am. So yours held 10 pounds, and then it what? Did Collapsed. It, it, oh, Lord. 10 pounds. I wouldn't make it on a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, so your bridge was the one that held the most? No. Okay. So tell us about your bridge. You're good. Stay right where you are. Come um, on back. Come on back. Hold up. Right there. Tell us about your bridge. Well, I did the suspension bridge, like I said before. Mm -hmm. Mine collapsed at 12 pounds. Tw I'm not going to make it on any of y'all's bridges. You well, see that, Well, the thing right? is, because it, <laughs> in what my mind... Use? What did you use? Um, I used popsicle sticks, okay. hot glue, um, a type of string. I forgot what the okay. exact but name. But to kind of hold it and do that. Okay. I also used fisheye hooks. So 12 pounds, that was it. Oh, Lord. Step back. What about your bridge? My truss bridge, it held up to 15 pounds without collapsing. Almost 15 pounds without oh collapsing. Oh, my gosh. And uh, it's, an, it's a bridge that trains travel on, and mm -hmm. it collapses mostly because of overloads from trains oh. and lowly supported. So the bridges, um, this is so interesting because you all don't drive yet, so you don't know what it's like to drive over one of these bridges. And so I've driven over these bridges, and I do, I, there's, what about the bridges that some feel like they're moving? Is that just in my mind? Um, uh, in my mind, if a bridge is moving, that's either because they're built like that, because yes. there are, uh, while right. I was doing research, I have seen where some bridges are supposed to move like that yes. to avoid being eroded. Oh, I love that. I love that. And so, ladies, I'm telling you, anything that you discovered about this project that really stood out for you? Well, see, the beam bridge, that's one bridge I would not like to drive over. And, yeah, it's <laughs> like, if 
it has that le not much support, then yeah. I don't know about are it. Are those like older bridges, or do they still build those kind? They're older bridges, actually. Okay. okay. So we need a new sturdier materials, right? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, very good. Anything you wanted to add that stu stood out for you? Not really. I just learned a lot about my particular bridge. I love that. Well, this has been fascinating. So thank you, ladies, so much. I already had this kind of, eh, when it came to bridges, right? So now, because of your science project, it's helped me even more as far as getting the information that I need as a driver and how to handle going over these bridges and understanding them. So thank you, ladies, so much. You're welcome. Keep doing great things, young lady. Keep mastering science fair projects, okay? Try to. And let me know when you learn how to drive so you can tell me <laughs> if you go over the All right, this has been the seventh grade, ladies and gentlemen, at, um, for Dublin Middle School. This has been a wonderful, wonderful day, I tell you. Just to meet the, the young people here at Dublin City Schools for their district science fair, K through 12, it's been absolutely wonderful. There's a plethora of information to be learned out there, and these young people are showing it one trifold at a time. So thank you girls so much. You're this welcome. has been a pleasure. Well done, Dublin City Schools. This is all the time we have for Real Talk here on TV 35. And please keep watching.